Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, to this fabulous day. It feels, it feels quite exciting. It feels like a wedding, strangely. <laughs> I had to write out what I'm going to say on a piece of paper. And the last time I did that was at a wedding. But, uh, don't worry, I haven't got the same speech. Um, my name's Ed Day. I'm a consultant psychiatrist. I work for Birmingham Solid Hall Mental Health Trust. I'm also a trustee of Changes Charity. And it's my um, pleasure to say a few words to uh, welcome you to this, uh, this fantastic event. Um, when I was asked to do this, I was asked to talk about my experiences and my uh, sort of the journey I've been on with changes. And I, it sent me back thinking, it sent me back reflecting. And stay with me here. Well, I, I reflected, when I first came to Birmingham 20 years ago, I thought, this city is a triumph of the evolution of man. Which is a strange thing to think when you arrive at the old New Street, um, because it didn't give you a great impression. Why did I think that? Well, because um, this city was the, the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, the workplace of the world. It's got fabulous buildings, old and new. It's had beautiful symphonies created. It's had the best and the loudest, heaviest rock music in the world. It's got great poets. It's got great playwrights. It's got great musicians. It's got international sport, cricket, tennis. It's got two great football clubs. And Aston Villa. <laughs> and I thought, I thought humankind has done some incredible things here. Some absolutely incredible things. But, but of course, sadly, my professional world tells me that there's a glitch in, in, in the wonderful evolutionary project that is man, mankind. And that's because about 5 to 10% of people in Birmingham, or indeed anywhere, anywhere in the world, will get into trouble with addiction in their life. They'll, the psychoactive substances, the, the man's love of psychoactive substances, that, the, let's face it, drove a lot of that creativity that I just mentioned, um, also leads some people into trouble because perhaps they're genetically or whatever programmed to lose control <coughs> of their use of those substances. And I, I've worked professionally for 18 years in the substance abuse services in Birmingham, and in that time I've I've seen some pretty terrible things in trying to help those people. Um, people that have totally lost control of their lives, uh, that are trapped in a, in, a, in a spiral, in a vicious circle that they can't get out of. And what's even worse is that very often they're the last person to see that that's the problem. Everyone around them can see it and wants them to do something about it, but they can't. And I've seen a lot of misery in that time, really unpleasant things. I've seen people that were dealt a poor hand in life to start with, who then take substances to cope with that, and that makes the problem worse. And I've seen people that lose everything, their family, their job, their prospects, their dignity. And when you're sitting with someone in a clinic in that situation, what you need to know is that there are some people who have pulled out of that. I describe people that are in that situation, they're in the sea with the sharks, but there is a life raft, and the people on the life raft are safe. And what's even better is that the people on the life raft are stretching out their hands to draw people out of the sea onto the life raft with them. And that life raft is the recovery community in Birmingham. There's a recovery community in every city, but the one in Birmingham is particularly good. And I know when I see anyone in clinic, and I say to them, do you know anyone in recovery? Do you know anyone that's had the problems you've got and has come out of it? And it's pretty rare that any of them do. Maybe one person. And why is that? Well, because the recovery community and the treatment worlds are two separate, completely separate worlds. They're completely different. People that have recovered don't tend to hang around in treatment centres, and why would they? And that's why the launch of this building, that's why we're here to celebrate this building and the opening of, of, of um, Recovery Central today. Because this building is a beacon for the recovery community. This says the recovery community is here. There is hope for people. People in, that, in the sea with the sharks can get that, um, that hand up onto the life raft. 